Welcome to the orientation video for developmental mechanisms, biology 3406. Um, sorry for the little bit of delay. Uh, there's been some adjustments because of the surge in the Omicron variant. Uh, the ongoing pandemic, the university has asked that the first two weeks of class be completely virtual. They're then allowing us to come back. Um, so here's what I'm going to do uh, to accommodate, make sure everybody is uh, taken care of. Uh, beginning the week of January 31st, I will begin our in-person lectures. Um, so that is meeting on, I believe, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9.30. Um, let me double check. I'm not certain. Yeah, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9.30. Okay, so I will begin having regularly scheduled the lecture portion of our class. will meet regularly on those dates beginning on... I guess it'd be the first, uh, so that, that week of January 31st, um, we'll start meeting for regular times. However, I will continue to have the online material available. It should be pretty comparable. Um, my experience has been is that some students do just fine online. They're able to learn. They take the time to engage. They take notes while they take while they listen to the lectures and everything works out fine and they learn the material well. A lot of other students really prefer the more traditional one. You can ask questions, you can engage, you're just there. Um, so that there's a lot of motivation, just having a time and a place to show up and do it and take care of it. There's a lot of advantage to that. But anyway, um, you can choose. If you'd rather do it online, great, continue it online. If you'd rather do it in person, come beginning on February 1st, sorry, is that right? Yeah, I guess February 1st. Um, yes, February 1st, come on uh, into class or you can do a little bit of both, whatever works for you, all right? Um, so let's take a look at um, the course and how it will work, how you'll access material. Uh, by the way, if you do decide to, to come online or to come in person, Quizzes and exams will still all be administered online, just to make sure everyone's on the same footing, everything's even for everyone. We'll still have um, online quizzes and exams. Now, the one exception to that, before we begin to look at material, is the labs. Because labs are a very different type of learning experience, they are going to be in person. We can't really do an online lab uh, effectively the whole purpose, at least not a biology lab, the whole purpose of a lab is to get the hands-on practical experience, and you just can't do that virtually. So we will continue that, uh, but we won't start until the week of the 31st for those labs. So uh, please, whichever lab, whether it's the Tuesday or the Thursday lab uh, that you are scheduled for, make sure that you are available to come. Uh, those are going to be very heavily weighted towards attendance and participation and showing up doing the work. Uh, so if you're not coming and doing the work, you're gonna, your grade will suffer dramatically for that lab section. Okay, so from your main page of the Blackboard site for this course, you've got a syllabus, a calendar. We'll look at those first, and then we'll go over the other materials that you have available. All right, so again, hybrid course, meaning that some of it's online, some of it's lecture uh, or traditional for the lectures, but the labs are just traditional. So just please be aware of that. We have a textbook. It's not really a textbook. It's kind of a hybrid almost itself between a textbook and more of a popular reading book. It's it's very accessible, not very dense. Uh, I think it's a really good one. I always have students ask if they absolutely need the book. I would very, very strongly suggest it. It is a little bit older because, again, it's not a textbook, which is good. You don't pay a ton for it. Um, I haven't even looked. Um, Uh, I think they're fairly inexpensive. Um, it looks like you can get a used one for 30 bucks, uh, which is pretty reasonable for a textbook. Um, so I, I do recommend that you get one of these. Um, they are very, very useful. Um, let's see, and I think there are two editions. Either actually works fine. I think the pages may be slightly different. Uh, uh, the most recent one is the second edition. Um, Oh, wow, it looks like you may even have a PDF. Yeah, so that's the second edition. Yeah, so you can get one, again, a decent one, it looks like for 30 bucks or so. So I highly recommend it. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's very, very useful, good for reviewing, um, good for um, 
helping you prep prior to the online lectures or the in-person once we start those. Um, so not absolutely necessary. Everything that is on quizzes and exams, I will cover in class. However, it's very useful. So do with that what you will. Uh, I will have online office hours this semester. You can sometimes find me in the office, but when I'm on campus, I'm often not in my office. I'm in my lab or somewhere else. So the very best way for you to contact me is by email. I'll try and respond to those within a day during the semester. If it's a weekend, it may be a little longer. Um, or just wait, log on to one of our Zoom office hours. Those are held each Monday and Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. So in the morning, Mondays and Wednesdays, and then in the evenings, 8 to 9 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So just um, you know, trying to give a little bit of variety there. Hopefully you can make one or two of those. Those are not required. Those are only if you need to, to show up, to ask questions, to discuss material, to review things, whatever you need to do. They are, those hours are there for you to use if you need them. And the link is here, okay? Uh, the course objectives. Uh, Evo Devo is a fairly new field in biology. There have been lots of new fields that have been developed over the last couple decades. Evo Devo is a little older than that, but it is really an integrative field, meaning that it incorporates many different uh, fields, everything from traditional embryology to a more modern DNA sequencing and uh, many of the modern techniques that are used are also integrated as part of EvoDevo. Okay? We're going to do background, so you get to know a little bit of the traditional stuff going all the way back to early um, ideas about uh, development and early embryology, and then we will then quickly move into our modern understanding from a genetic basis of of the way that we build organisms okay the laboratory section again will be in person you must provide uh, you must make sure you can be there uh, they will begin the week of the 31st i'm not going to talk in this video about the details of lab we will do that um, when we begin the labs i'll put i'll begin to organize that material i need to do some slight modifications because of the delay um, but I will be posting the material, and then we'll do a quick orientation and give you a, a quick a little syllabus of how the lab will work once we start the lab. Okay. In addition to the lab, there are three other components of this course upon which you will be graded. Your exams, there will be three of them. We'll look at the calendar here in a little bit, and then there will be a final exam that's comprehensive. All of those exams are required. The dates are set. Barring any sort of change in the university calendar, they will be on those dates, and you must make time and arrangements on the dates. They will be online, so you can take them anytime, but on that specific date. Okay, so there will be 90 minute uh, limits to 50 questions, multiple choice, true, false, matching. You will not be able to backtrack, however, so once you answer a question, you're done with it. Now, just a little note of explanation. The online exams are very different than an in-person exam, and there are basically two ways that you could do it. You could have, try to be very, very strict and rigorous, and they're like lockout browsers and uh, uh, making sure you don't look away from your screen. You have to have a camera on your computer, and, and that's trying to prevent people from cheating so that they're just there without any additional resources or material. Uh, that's a little draconian. It's also, I don't think, very effective. People always find ways to get around it, and so it's still unfair for those that are trying to be honest. Um, and so I've kind of gone the other way, option two. You have online exams, completely open resources. So whatever resources you want to use, that's fine. However, because of that, you don't get to backtrack. And in addition, not every student, you know, every student gets a slightly different exam. There are pools of questions all roughly equivalent. Randomly, your questions are drawn from those pools of questions. So no two students get the exact same question, uh, or sorry, the exact same combination of questions. Um, and so that way you're still, you know, tested. Hopefully you've learned the material, but you do have open resources. There's also a limited time, 90 minutes, which means if you're trying to completely look up every answer or teach yourself the material as you go through that exam, you're going to run out of time. So hopefully you prepare for those exams as if you were preparing for a regular test and maybe you have to check something or look up your notes or go online and see if you can find some information about some of the questions, but most of them you just know and, and are well prepared for. Okay, the final exam is comprehensive, same format, a little longer, but I take questions equally from the three other exams. Uh, it's online, open book, um, open resources, um, and then uh, 
well, and you can take it any day on either Monday, May 9th or Monday, Tuesday, May 10th. Those are the first two days of finals. So one or the other, uh, take it. It'll You'll have a little bit extra time because it will be a little longer. But other than that, the format is the same. All of the quizzes and exams, so, sorry, all of the exams count towards your grade. I will not drop any exams. You must prepare ahead of time and make sure you take all of those exams. By the way, if at some point in this semester you have an emergency, you're sick or something, notify me immediately. We can often make accommodations with some notice, but if you are coming to me three, four days after you've missed something and say, hey, I missed this, then at that point there will no longer be an option for you to um, make up that work. Okay, We live in a world where unless you're in a coma or otherwise incapacitated, you can jump on your phone and send me an email immediately, right? Or maybe not immediately, depending on the emergency, but same day, right? So please notify me uh, if something comes up and you will be missing material. Um, we can perhaps make accommodations. There are no guarantees, but it's often the case with uh, notice in time, okay? Each week, unless there's an exam on a Wednesday, there will be a quiz. Okay, and the quiz is just over the material cover that week. We'll look at the calendar so you can be and other there's you can also use the daily links folders to help make sure you don't miss any of those quizzes. Quizzes are essentially the same format as an exam. They're just five questions though. So very short, open resources online. You answer it, do the best you can. You will be able to backtrack on quiz questions, uh, but not on um, uh, exam questions though. Uh, so open resources, use whatever you feel will help you. Um, there were are 13 of them. At the end of the semester, I will drop your lowest quiz score. So if you missed one, it won't impact your grade. But if you miss more than one, it's going to be an impact. Uh, if you take them all, you get a little bit of a boost just because then, you know, one of your lowest ones maybe didn't do as well will be dropped and then all the others will be kept. Um, uh, an answer key for the quizzes says will be posted on Blackboard. Because of the online format, you can actually look up the answers after the availability date is over. Uh, to do that, you just go to the My Grades link and then click on the score. So you can access for quizzes, exams, all your other things. You can look at your scores throughout the semester. Okay? There are reading assignments from the book. Those are just generally assigned. I don't follow up or don't require you to write or, or uh, respond to anything for the book reading assignments. Additionally, there will be weekly, sometimes more than one a week, but not often, usually just one a week. There will be an additional reading assignment. These are posted. There are links in the daily links folder, which I'll show you in a bit. In addition, the readings are also found here in this readings folder over on the left-hand uh, menu. Um, for those reading questions, for the reading assignments, sorry, there will be reading questions. You must complete those by the day it is assigned, at midnight. So you have all day that day. You can do them early if you want. You probably don't want to get too far ahead. But you must complete those by that date. Those are essentially participation points. Um, if you make an honest attempt, they're just very short, one or two sentence, open answer questions to things that you should have read about. They're, the idea is to motivate you to do the reading and keep up with the material. So make sure you don't miss any of those. Turn them in. You get 100% on those. Those are just basically gimme points. You don't want to miss those um, because uh, it, that will be a little boost to your grade. So those are the four components upon which you will be graded. The scale for which you'll be graded, exams, will count as 60%. The quizzes are 10%. Reading questions, an additional 10%. Again, you can get those reading questions. As long as you turn them all in, you'll get 100% for that component of the course. And then the lab will be 10% over, or sorry, 20% overall. And again, we'll talk about how the lab will work and how you'll be assessed in the lab uh, once we meet that first day in lab. Uh, and so to calculate your grade at the end of the semester, I'll just take whatever percentage you have in your exams. Let's say you have a 90% in exams, and you get 90% of that score. So if you think 60% of my grade comes from exams, and I got a 90% average on my exams, then that would mean that you'd get like 54 points uh, or 54 percentage points uh, for the exams section and then so on. To get an A in this course, you must get at least a 90% uh, of all of the points that are in that, uh, that are available throughout the course. Okay, If you have an 89.9, it's not an A. I don't round up. No matter where I draw the lines, some students are going to fall just a little bit short. So the only way for me to be fair is to make those designations clear at the beginning of the semester and then hold all students to the same um, 
standards. Now, throughout your academic career, sometimes you fall just short of the next grade up, other times you barely squeak by and barely make a B or an A or whatever. And so over your academic career, those work out. We're limited to A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's. We don't have any other options like pluses or minuses, so that's just the system we're working in. Now, because the course is online, it, you must keep up. You can start beginning again on the 1st of February to come to class, the lecture portions, in person. But the lectures will be online. If you'd like to continue that way um, after the first two weeks, you're welcome to continue to do that. Be, but be aware that there, and you probably already are aware of this after the last two years of pandemic, but there are advantages and disadvantages to the online format. I use an asynchronous format, meaning we don't have a set meeting time. It's not a live course. Um, you can't interact, but there are advantages and disadvantages to that. But the advantage is you can engage with that material whenever you want, right? You don't need to be there at 1030 on a certain time or a certain day. If you're working or if you have other obligations, you can do it later or, or earlier, whatever works for you. The main thing is you don't want to start to get behind. You don't want to cram everything in. That's not good for learning. In addition, if you are just sitting down and watching the lectures, you're not going to learn very effectively. Treat it like it's a regular class, even though you might be at home watching um, on your computer. Take notes, engage your mind. If you have questions, write them down. And then the way that you can engage, even though you won't be able to um, talk to me directly at that time, you can come to one of the Zoom office hours and ask those questions or review that material, ask me to clarify something. So I think it can still be a very good and useful if you uh, format, if you will, engage and uh, take advantage of it. Um, so my office hours are Monday, Wednesdays, 10 a.m., Tuesdays, Thursdays, 8 p.m. Um, what else? There are, oh, so even though it's asynchronous, there are still deadlines, right? So you can't just push everything off. You'll miss a lot of, you'll miss reading assignments. You might miss quizzes. Make sure that you're still uh, completing those those things as you go, um, although exact times you do that, as long as you're meeting those deadlines, the exact days and times you do that is not um, super critical. Okay, uh, what else? I think everything is there. Review content, help with, oh, we don't have worksheets, but help with labs. Um, Yeah, there are no worksheets for this class, but um, so help with lab questions or other material. So just be aware of that, okay? Um, disability assessment assistance, here is the link. If you have already used these resources or need these resources, you may already be very aware. The key is communication. Just let me know, make sure that we get everything in place that we need. If this does not apply to you, be aware it's available if need be. If something comes up during the semester and you need it, it's there. But again, communicate, let me know so we can do that. If you're coming at the end and saying, oh, I needed extra time to take those exams uh, because of this and this and this, first of all, you need to make sure it's documented and gone through the proper channels. But secondly, if it's something in the past, we can't do anything about it. So please use them and communicate as needed. All right, so let's take a look at the calendar. I'll save that. I'll post the new version with that slight variation. Uh, so here's our link to the calendar. Again, slight modifications. We push the labs back just a little bit. I've eliminated one of them to streamline it. So our first lab will begin on February 1st if you are in the Tuesday lab, February 3rd if you're in the Thursday lab. And then our lab final will be two weeks before the last day of class. So labs are there. I'll give you orientation and material. We'll talk about that when we meet for that in the, that first week of labs. Uh, so each one, you've got a topic with a unit number. Those are just for this course. They don't refer to the book or anything like that. And then um, assignments. So what you're supposed to read for that day, um, if you take a quiz or if you have reading questions due, occasionally have both reading questions and a quiz due. Quizzes, although they're po posted on Thursday, you have until Friday at midnight of each week to do it. So take them Thursday if that works best for you. If the material's fresh in your mind, great. If not, you can take them on Friday as long as you complete them Friday by midnight. Okay, I'll post them Thursday morning. Um, they'll be available for those two full days. Um, so anytime uh, on Thursday or Friday for those quizzes. However, the reading questions are due on the day they are listed. So please, please don't miss those. Again, they're basically participation points. You can do them a little bit ahead of time. 
the first unit up through um, reading questions number four is already posted. Please do that. Now, the calendar looks works great as an overview, kind of a snapshot. You can keep track of everything if you want to write those dates down in your own personal calendar, whatever works best to keep track for you. The calendar is here and shows you the entire semester. In addition, to help keep students organized, I have put this link here, or this content here, daily links. So for the daily links, and some of them I'm still updating, so you won't be able to see unit two and three yet. But for unit one, which is, takes us through February 15th, all of the material is here. It's all the online format. And again, if on the February 1st you don't want to continue in the online format, you can come to class. You can still use this, get a little bit of reinforcement or double double the lecture because you like Dr. Terry so much, you want to see him virtually, and then you want to come to class also. <laughs> I'm teasing, but whatever you want to do, okay? So beginning on the first. But for this week, you're supposed to watch the course orientation video, which you're already doing right now. And then you have a couple other videos. I try to make them relatively short, so they're kind of broken up. Instead of a 50-minute lecture, you might have two 20-minute lectures and a 10-minute lecture, or you might have three 15-minute lectures, or something like that. So they're broken down a little bit more manageably. You can go take a break or do one one day and some the other. And so everything that you need to do by this day is here. Now, if you don't want to watch all these videos on Tuesday, and we're kind of scrambling to get the online stuff together, you could wait a little bit because nothing you don't have to turn anything. So if you wanted to watch this one on Tuesday and these two on Wednesday, that's perfectly fine. Please don't fall too far behind. But be aware that on some of these, there are reminders of things on the calendar uh, that you have to turn in. So for your reading assignments, you'll say, oh, I'm going to watch a video on Science Leading to Evo Devo. Um, Sorry, reading questions. There's no reading questions here, but it reminds you to take the quiz. Quizzes will appear in the quizzes folder. You'll just click on the link and take it. The first quiz, you can take as many times as you want, just to help you get familiar with the format. After that, quizzes 2 through 13, you can only take one time. Okay, So again, you come to, this is for this Thursday, everything that you need to do is here. Sometimes it's just a reminder, there's nothing to click on because you're supposed to read the textbook for that one. Uh, other times, it'll t click you and take you to a link for a video. Now, you could skip this ad, but don't skip the part that can help you get the job done. At Granger, we're here for you with supplies and solutions. Okay, I've posted this all my videos on um, YouTube. Use some background uh, because of that, and the ideas you may need headphones sometimes. The volume of this recording is a little, little uh, low, but we're going to go all um, the way back to the beginning. At least. You, uh, oh, the reason I post them on YouTube, sometimes you have to watch that little short five minute. Huh? Um, advertisement. I don't get paid. I'm not like monetized or anything like that. Um, and I know it's a little bit of a of a um, inconvenience to click through the the advertisement, but it eliminates any format issues. I had posted some before on Blackboard, and sometimes I had students that couldn't see them, or there are technical issues. YouTube is so widely available and so well supported that I've never had an, a student saying, "Oh, I can't watch a YouTube video. I have something's wrong with this YouTube video." So that's why they're there. Um, so just be aware of that, take notes, watch them, come to me if you have any questions um, with those things. And those are available always through the daily links folder on the day that that uh, lecture is assigned. In addition to the daily links folders, just for example, you have a reading assignment due next Tuesday. Uh, here is the link. You'd click on that link after you read paper number one. All of the reading questions are just short two to three questions just to write in. You only need to write a sentence or two, um, and they will be on something that was in the paper. Again, as long as you give it an honest attempt, you'll get full credit for those. Um, and so make sure you get all those done by the date they're listed on the calendar, or you can just make sure you're logging into the daily links folder on the days and make sure you're finishing them there. Okay. Now, in addition, you have a folder here with all of the PowerPoints. They're just the same ones that are in the video lectures and that we'll be using in the traditional class if you want to use them to take notes on or whatever, just refer to. All of those are there uh, with the same units as are listed in the um, each individual little lecture. And they're broken down, so 1.1, I've got three different video lectures, and so you have a PowerPoint that corresponds to each of those three. I also have a folder here that I call SLOs, which is short for Student Learning Outcomes. These are basically little um, overviews of each of the individual units. So here's 1.1, there were documents. 
with all of the major concepts that you need to know for this first one. There are things that you need to have know the definition for. There are questions that you should be able to answer. Be careful because many of these will come up on an exam. So if you're not certain, if you didn't see it in the um, online lecture or, some, or you're just uh, confused, make a note of it. Ask me during an office hour. Make sure that you know these things. It's basically, I used to do this when I was in college. I would make little outlines for myself of things I thought were important and were helping me to make organize everything in my head. So I've provided that for you. Use them as you take your notes, as you study, as you're getting ready for an exam. These SLOs are a great resource. Okay, in addition to that, you have the readings here. There are also links to all the readings in the daily links folder, but if you need to, you can access all of the readings in this folder. Um, labs is, I'm still working on. Those will be the third week, again, starting the week of February 1st for Tuesday and February 3rd for Thursday labs. Quizzes and exams are empty right now. Uh, there will be links to take the quiz uh, beginning on Thursday this week. Uh, and you'll be able to take that first quiz Thursday and Friday. Again, the first one as many times as you want. And then the exams, the first exam, I believe, is February 17th or something. So um, you can uh, that, that will be empty until uh, February 17th. Now, once you've taken exams and quizzes, you can actually review all of your answers, all of the correct answers, by going to the My Grades link. Um, I don't think I have. Oh, I do. Um, Grade Center. No, that's not it. Um, there's a My Grades link um, that's there for students. I don't have one as a teacher, I guess. They used to have one as a teacher. But anyway, you can go to the My Grades link and click on the score for each of those, and you'll be able to see, after the availability has ended, you'll be able to see your answers. You'll be able to see all of the correct answers, so you can review and go over. And that will be helpful. The final exam is actually composed of questions that are off of all of the previous exams with maybe some slight variations. Uh, you may see different ones because that we're drawing from pools, but if you know all the answers um, and review ones you missed for the midterm exams, the final should be really easy and straightforward for you. All right, so that takes care, I think, of everything. Uh, hopefully I'll see many of you on um, February the, the 1st. If I don't, that's fine, but please, if you're stuck, if you have questions about anything, send me an email or just wait log on to one of the Zoom office hours so that you make sure you know you're keeping up and you are uh, able to do well this semester.